Hey, welcome to Make Better Drinks. I'm David, and today we're talking about glassware. Now, of course, you can make a cocktail using any glass you happen to have on hand, but as it happens, Dave and I talked about this just the other day. Hey, you know what? Why don't we just make cocktails in these instead of your fancy uh, coupes and stuff? Man, that is a terrible idea. Oh yeah? Well, why don't you make a video about it? So here we are. Today, I'm going to show you the three types of glasses that I recommend you keep in your home bar. And then we'll find out just how big of a difference glassware really makes. So, let's make some drinks. Okay, so these are the three types of glasses that you should really have in your home bar. And these are really gonna cover you for 90% of the cocktails that you're ever gonna wanna make. Uh, to start with here, we've got a Collins glass or a highball glass, as the name implies. This is really good for drinks that are served with fizzy liquids like tonics and sodas, and really anything that you want to serve kind of in an up and refreshing sort of way. Typically, you would serve these uh, using ice cubes at uh, about a medium size. I'm just gonna drop these in here just like that, and then you'd also usually use a straw with this type of glass. Now, a similar glass to, uh, to the Collins glass is the Old Fashioned glass, or the Double Rocks glass. And again, as the name implies, this one is often used for drinks like an Old Fashioned, but it's also good for things like margaritas, where you want a salt rim, because this type of glass, you don't usually use a straw. But it is really nice, if you have one of uh, these uh, kind of silicon ice molds that can produce a very big rock of ice, sort of drop it in there. It takes up most of the volume of the glass. It just looks really nice uh, when you have your liquid in there. Uh, now, these are two types of glasses that are useful uh, if you're having drinks over ice, uh, and that's in contrast to the coupe or the cocktail glass, where you would typically not put ice in this glass. And, you know, that means that the drink's not going to dilute, the ice isn't going to melt, but you can keep it from getting overly warm uh, just by gripping it by the stem here. So the heat from your hand isn't gonna transfer into the cocktail, so it won't get overly warm while you're holding onto it. Now, you might be looking at these glasses and thinking these look really fancy, and I do really like the look of them, but they really weren't expensive. I have the boxes here, so for each of these glasses, I was able to find a six pack for about $17 for six, uh, just at a local Marshalls. So you really don't need to break the bank to get some really nice glassware for your cocktails. What about the Solo Cups? So let's take a look at some disposable cups and other common types of glassware, just figure out how they stack up with, uh, with these options. So one of the big differences between different types of glassware is volume. Now here, I made a couple of different drinks to demonstrate. Uh, I made uh, Tom Collins uh, here on this side, and then I made uh, martinis on this side. And you can see here, this is my preferred Collins glass. It holds about 12 ounces of liquid, and it comes right up to the top of the cocktail glass when, uh, when I'm basically done here. And it just looks really nice in the glass uh, compared to this 16 ounce drinking glass, which is the same general shape, but the, the volume of the liquid doesn't even come up all the way to the top of the glass. So just from an aesthetic perspective, this calling glass uh, just happens to look a lot better than uh, this drinking glass. And the same is true when we take a look at these uh, martinis. So here we have a coupe that I like to use, and this one is about five and a half ounces in terms of volume versus this larger martini glass that holds closer to nine or 10 ounces in volume. And you know, with the coupe, uh, the volume of the liquid comes up very close to the lip of the glass. It just looks very elegant and presentable, like something I wanna drink, versus this glass where the liquid only comes about halfway up and it kind of looks like I only got half a drink. And so that just demonstrates the difference that the glass's volume can have on the presentation of your cocktail. All right, so there you go. Solo cup. Hey, you used my idea. Exactly. So what do you think? You know, I think I hate this. Really? Why is that? Well, it looks cheap and it feels bad. And like, I know that it's the same drink in both of them, but that makes me think of like frat parties and stuff. And this makes me think of, you know, sipping on a nice cocktail. And, and I have this like mental block where it's like, I don't want to sip this, I want to chug it, right? But you shouldn't chug that, right? I mean, not if you're paying 12 bucks for it, which is probably what you're going to pay at a cocktail bar. Yeah, I don't think I'd pay 12 bucks for this. It, it looks too bad. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, drinking is a lot like eating, right? So, like, if you go to a fancy restaurant and you just get served, like, a heap of pasta on a paper plate, you're not going to want to pay $30 for it, even if it tastes really good. And the same is true of cocktails, right? I mean, if you get, this cocktail could taste delicious, but you'll never know because you don't even want to drink it because it's being served to you in one of these plastic cups and it just, just by looking at it, you don't want to pay $12 for that. Wait, so you mean glassware is primarily about aesthetics? Always has been. So hopefully that shows you how picking up just those three types of glasses can really elevate your home bar experience so you can make better drinks. So thanks for watching and let us know in the comments what type of glassware you like to use when you're making cocktails. And don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.